Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Some pretty big news coming out of the self-driving world. As of yesterday, Cruise and Waymo are permitted to operate fully in the entire city of San Francisco, California. This is after being able to operate in limited amounts in parts of the city for the last few months and years here. And as of yesterday, the city voted to allow them to operate through the whole city at any time. Now, this is actually this is actually a pretty big deal, believe it or not. Uh, for the last few months and years, these two companies were only allowed to operate in specific portions due to safety concerns, not having enough data, uh, concerns around making sure that it wouldn't sort of interrupt emergency vehicles, traffic flows, and things like that. Uh, but now the city has said, yep, you guys are good to go. We trust you enough to be able to operate your systems fully in the entire city. And now once you're ready to go get going, you have the permission from the city to be able to do that. The one uh, difference here is that with Waymo, they'll be allowed to operate up to 65 miles an hour. Waymo uh, operates the Jaguar, the electric Jaguars that you might see running around your city, uh, depending where you live. And Cruise will be allowed to operate, I believe, up to 35 miles an hour as we hear some sort of uh, uh, noise going out. And I got my car uh, getting the tires changed. So. Yeah, this is it's pretty fascinating. Waymo is getting a little bit of a, of a boost here. I'm assuming they'll be able to operate on the highway, given that they'll be allowed to operate up to 65 miles an hour and cruise at 35. But really, the overarching theme here is that now we have the first city, at least in the United States, that has given permission to companies to operate self-driving vehicles in full with little to no exceptions within the borders of a city. And in Waymo's uh, situation, they should be able to also allow uh, allow to operate on the highways, given that their speed limit is at 65 miles an hour. Now, the, the broader implications here as this technology gets approved and it's allowed on the roads is that now we have a pathway, at least in the United States, for self-driving cars to be uh, allowed probably way sooner than people expect across the entire country. It's going to start with San Francisco. But the reason why I say this is self-driving cars, <laughs> this noise is crazy, <laughs> self-driving cars should be um, should prove out two huge things very quickly. Number one, they should be able to prove out that the safety, especially versus a human driver, is going to be significantly better. Without a driver uh, behind the, the wheel, one would think you won't get distracted looking at your phone. You won't be drunk driving it. You will be uh, fully attentive the whole time. And so from that perspective, perspective rather, these autonomous systems should prove out to be uh, safer than a human. And then the second one, which I believe is a much bigger forcing function, as I correct my hair here a little bit, uh, is the cost. So in your typical setting with, say, Uber or Lyft in those, uh, in those cities, it would cost, I don't know, going from your house to the airport, say, 15, 20 mile drive, probably between 50 to 80 bucks to go there. But with a self-driving car, you remove the cost of the driver. And so the cost to get to your destination should be significantly lower and also significantly safer. And now San Francisco is providing this sort of blueprint that should show this data very clearly in not just limited, limited settings, but across the whole city. So what I think is going to happen here is that there's going to be other cities uh, for the rest of the year and probably into the next couple of years that will jump on board with what San Francisco just allowed, which is full uh, sort of open uh, capability for self-driving vehicle makers, in this case, Guaymo and Cruz, to operate their vehicles. So we should see it pop up in Orlando, Florida, potentially, Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, places like that, where let's say inclement weather isn't going to be a huge problem, at least to start. So things like snowy conditions or icy conditions won't be a variable that automakers have to deal with. Now, let's sort of push this out and see what other players could potentially benefit from this as well. One of the companies that I follow closely, and if you follow this channel closely, you know that Tesla is sort of a pretty big part of the channel and how we're covering its evolution and how it's sort of going into this decade. This also bodes well for a company like Tesla, because from their perspective, they haven't yet achieved what's called level four, which is where Cruise and Waymo are at, which means a self-driving car that doesn't require a driver behind the steering wheel and pedal the car still requires a steering wheel and pedal in case of an emergency so that either somebody can jump in the car and move it or somebody can remotely, you know, plug into the car and move it around. Technically, you don't need steering wheel and pedals for that, but it's sort of the definition for the technology. Tesla isn't there yet. They're much closer to level three going on level four. 
But the huge advantage that Tesla has in this situation is that their camera system, sort of the A camera system with the hardware that they use to operate the car, which is, you know, they call it hardware three, hardware four. The one advantage they have there is that they don't have to map any cities. They don't have to, like when when crews send uh, different cars or different technologies in the city and make sure, you know, that they have that corner mapped or that traffic cone mapped or that road work area mapped or that stop sign mapped, things like that. It's much more dependent on them being able to go out there and survey the area before they allow the self-driving car to operate in that region. Whereas from Tesla's perspective, they basically have a fleet of hundreds of thousands of cars already driving around, technically millions of cars, but hundreds of thousands uh, actively using what's called their full self-driving software, collecting data and sending it back to the mothership, sort of doing the work they need to do to, to basically drive through the entire United States on their own with the car doing all of the driving. So with San Francisco going live, what this means is that once Tesla is ready to flip the switch and say, hey, level four is here and Waymo and Cruise is already getting getting the allowance to operate in those in those areas. So in theory, what Tesla is going to be able to do is jump right in into that sort of open allowance from San Francisco to start and start operating their self-driving vehicles relatively quickly once they have achieved the, the data solution. And of course, if you listen to Elon Musk and you follow the company closely, he, he has said multiple times that they're very, very close. But what this really in my opinion, really highlights is that some of the regulatory concerns that we may have had, let's say, for people like myself that are excited about self-driving vehicles and their potential in creating a better environment for people, especially in a lot of different use cases. You know, we can talk about the the job impact in a different video because that is a legitimate concern. And we have to talk about that. But from a safety perspective and a cost perspective, is a huge, huge boost to the economy. Now, Tesla should be able to jump right into that from the get-go. They're not going to have to wait, you know, to have a a little bit of a slice of San Francisco to operate in. They've shown, San Francisco has already shown, at least in their case, that they're allowing uh, companies to just operate in the entire city outright. And like I said before, the forcing functions behind the safety and the cost are also going to allow other cities to very quickly see the, the benefits of doing something like that in their city. And they're going to be like, wow, okay, so I'm going to be able to reduce road deaths by, I don't know, 10x. I'm going to be able to reduce uh, accidents by 10x, and I'm going to dramatically lower the cost of entry for transportation in my city, which is going to allow my economy to boom theoretically, because now you're allowing people that perhaps can't afford to own a car, can't afford to carpool, can't afford, from a time perspective, to go to the nearest bus stop and spend way longer than they should on transportation. It unlocks uh, economic prosperity in some cases by having a technology like this available. And with San Francisco being the blueprint and Tesla's uh, technology theoretically being able to scale significantly quicker than the other automakers, or in this case, the self-driving providers in Waymo and Cruise, now they're equipped to really take over the country by storm. So, But it's, it's, really, it's really just highly dependent on Tesla actually solving self-driving without the mapping, with just their computer uh, system that they've set up and their camera system. So I would love to hear what you have to say in the comment section below. I think this is actually really, it's a huge deal. It's a, it's a really big deal. The news have kind of gone under the radar a little bit if you're sort of tracking the mass uh, mainstream media and all those different areas. But this signals uh, a very huge step that now we have a blueprint to showcase that self-driving vehicles are going to be way better for for moving people from point A to point B. And we have legislative bodies that are allowing this to happen. That That is huge. If you think about, if you're somebody who has been tracking this space for a really long time, one of the biggest concerns was regulatory bodies coming in and, and, and being very big, say, bottlenecks or putting up walls out of fear of, hey, you're not going to be able to operate here because you're dangerous. But we're already getting uh, approvals for these areas before Tesla's technology in this case is even ready and Waymo and Cruise are benefiting from this. And I'm super happy that they are as well. But the landscape is changing and it's changing in a way that I wasn't expecting. I thought something like this was going to take a lot longer. And yeah, it's one city, but that one city is going to have data points that prove that a solution like this is going to be very beneficial from a safety perspective and a cost perspective. And again, with Tesla's scale to be able to flip a switch and the camera systems working anywhere and not needing to map the cities, I think gives them an outsized advantage once they solve the data perspective. 
because now they have millions of cars on the road and they can also operate anywhere. It's just up to the city to allow them or not. So, and with San Francisco going live, okay, I'm now repeating myself. So let me know. Let me know what you think uh, of this concept in the comment section below. Let me know if I'm thinking about this correctly and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great weekend and uh, yeah, we'll see if we'll make another video today. All right, bye-bye.